Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing trip, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. Certain bodies of water possess idyllic characteristics that produce trophy-sized fish. Yes, sir. No feature more significant than that of an abundant food supply. Gosh, they're all this size. Yet it takes a flawless balance of other contributing dynamics to maintain the marvel for future generations. There he is. This week, Kim shares some tips, techniques, as well as his underwater observations, some which may raise an eyebrow and spur some forthright thought in regards to this prominent fishery. Indian River Gold. As Kim Stricker gazes over the glittering lake, he ponders the magnitude of his lifelong obsession with the freshwater ecosystem, searching for recreation, adventure, and knowledge. For hidden beneath the waves is an amazing world that exists, experienced only by those who seek its wonder and reward. Today, Kim and his cameraman, Ben Scheidler, prepare for another adventure in Northern Michigan, both above and below the water's surface. Undeniably, the endeavor requires an extensive amount of gear and vigilant preparation. Yet, the experience and the enlightening information they're documenting is well worth the effort. A beautiful day in Indian River. The spawn deal's just starting to happen. And hopefully we can put it together. This sun ought to bring them, ought to lock them up pretty good. We'll see what happens. Boy, that comes out of the hole so good. There's a nice bed right here that is holding a good one. And let's see if he'll jump on my menace grub. Get it right in front of his nose and I'm gonna pop it. That's what it took. That's what it took. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at, look at that beautiful fish. Yes, ooh. Come on, jump for the camera, that's it. Jump for the camera. You were being finicky. You were a tough one, to, tough one to catch. Come on over. Come on over here, and I'll get you right back in there. Look at that. Oh, yes. You were being a little stinker. I <clears throat> got you good, though. But that was the trick, was to get it right in front of his nose. And when I popped it erratically, that's what triggers him. Another solid mullet lake. Smallmouth. This is the deal. You go right back down to your bed. And I'll go find another one. That's him over the side, I think, right there. Yeah, it is. Right there. Throwing past the bed 
that falls. And the tails just move like crazy. When I pop it, those tails move, I'll tell you that. Oh, he's, just, he's a big challenge, too. He's a good one. <laughs> he wanted that medicine grub. Oh, look at that. Look at that pig. Indian River pig. Come on over to my net here. Look at that. That is a thick football. <laughs> now he ate the menace grub. Menace grub on a, a jointed structure head. We'll talk about that a little detail later. But right now, Indian River. There's more Indian River gold coming right up, right after these messages. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Luz, feel the difference. Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Seaguar, trust Seaguar when everything is on the line. And by Aquaview, reinventing underwater cameras. The head that I'm using is Strike King's jointed structure head. It's jointed so the fish have a difficulty in throwing the hook. There's no leverage with a jointed bait. And the head is shaped like a cobra, but it slides through vegetation and it rocks over a hard structure like these rocks and the, the logs that we're fishing today. And it comes with like a I think that's a four-aught wide gap hook. And the bait that I'm using is the Rage Menace Grub. And this is the standard size. They also come in a, a, a baby Menace Grub, but this year they've come out with a Magnum uh, Menace Grub. I use pearl white because I can see it on the bottom while I'm fishing these beds. And you're just texposing it, which is Texas rigged but you bring the hook through like so, and then just bury it in the plastic on the other side. That is all snag-proof, weedless, and will stick the smallies. He's looking at it. It's right in front of him. <laughs> He watches it come out of the bed. Turns, he looks at it. Good size fish, he just went off. I bet you he'll grab the caffeine shed. One two punch. Give him the old one two punch. Just that slow fall. Coming down to ya. <laughs> the slow fall. <laughs> Look at these fish. Oh man. Ah, ha, ha, ha. It never gets old. It's a magical time of year. Come up you big old mullet lake. Small mouth. Yes, but just changing it up between between the uh, caffeine shed and that menace grub. And now here's another solid, solid, solid fish. <laughs> ah, yes, loving it, loving it. Mm, love catching smallmouths, but just. Fish in that caffeine shad weightless. This is a three-aught extra wide gap uh, hook that I use with it. But look at that dandy. Isn't that nice? Sometimes they want it on the bottom and sometimes they're triggered by a slow falling presentation. 
Yet for the most part this trip, it was the meddling menace grub encroaching along the gravelly bottom that got their attention. This jointed structure head goes over and through this rock so good without hanging up. Coming right at him. He's looking. Oh, he snapped at it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Here he comes. And I see those rage tails when it falls. Here he comes, watch. Dropping my power poles. And we're gonna bring this one right up. Turn around, it's coming in. Come on, baby. But he's gonna jump all over that. He's getting it right now. There he is, there he is. It's one or the other. Look at the size, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> that is great. But it's so, it's so interesting to watch how they react. I'm gonna get this, oh there he just got off. I should have netted him, but that is so, so cool. But to watch how they react, some of them want the caffeine shed, they want that some that fall. That one definitely was mad when it was in the nest. And I'll bet you anything, he's guarding eggs. He was guarding eggs all right, but not as diligently as you might expect. When we come back, I'll give you a close up look at the current situation underwater, and it might surprise you, it did me. Put on your mask and fins, a revealing dive segment is up next. Welcome back to Hook and Look. It's with enthusiasm and great curiosity that Kim organizes his scuba gear in preparation to plunge into the water. Let's join him now on the lake bottom. You can see, you can see how you've got these big logs and right next to the log is where that fish has his bed. And just like the rock, you can see how the wood is encapsulated with zebra mussels as well. Taking into consideration that most of the hard structures smallmouth fan their beds beside are coated with colonies of sharp zebra mussels, that along with the jaggedness of the rocky bottom, you can see why it's advantageous to use an abrasive resistant fishing line like Seaguar fluorocarbon. You don't want to break off fighting one of those giants. There's so many big smallmouth here in Indian River. Big, solid, stocky smallmouth. The Indian River lakes are just phenomenal. With that said, I am, however, baffled by my observations and a bit concerned. We're catching these beautiful, heavy adult smallmouths but not catching any smaller sized bass. What concerns me even more is, while underwater the last few years here in Indian River, I haven't seen any either. Every bass I've encountered underwater here is the same size footballs I've been catching. It makes me wonder, have I just been looking in the wrong places for small fish? Or am I witnessing an issue with yearly recruitment? You've probably already noticed the abundance of round gobies infesting these rocky nests. But what's increasingly worrisome is the noticeable lack of concern on the parental male's part. Typically, the guarding smallmouths frantically chase off the intruders, but all the bass I observed here on these nests seem as though they've grown accustomed to the presence of round gobies and for the most part are simply ignoring the threat. Perhaps they've been pestered to the point they've given up defending the nest from these egg predators. Yet they don't appear to be exhausted. Another thought is, could it be the size of the gobies? The observable goby population throughout this lake 
is now predominantly small, only a couple inches long, and can conceal themselves within the rocky crevices of the nest. Watch closely and you'll see them gulping up the eggs. I think it's a wise assumption that the larger gobies have been eaten because the bass readily attack a larger lure when it encroaches on the nest. There's no doubt that the adult smallmouth have been living high on the hog, gorging themselves with these prolific bait fish. And the smallmouths have grown to record proportions since. Yet on the other side of the coin, just how successful has the spawn been the last few years? As you can see, the gobies are indeed a threat, but keep in mind that several factors come into play that affect the spawn and smallmouth recruitment. As I've documented in the past on other lakes, the nests here in Indian River that were fanned on a softer marl bottom did not harbor many gobies at all and may very well be the most successful beds for the smallmouth's brood. One way to gauge and monitor smallmouth recruitment is to conduct fall fingerling studies. However, unlike Lake St. Clair, I'm told that the Michigan DNR does not have the funding nor the manpower in the Indian River area to conduct these studies. So we all want to keep our eyes open and I'll continue sharing my underwater observations. We don't want to jump to conclusions, but when you're not seeing other year classes, it does make you wonder as to what the bass population will be at Burton Mullet in years to come. We'll be right back. Want more underwater content? Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be right back. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, the only outboard that lets you have it all. The original Owacky Tool, your soft bait's best mate. Trick Step, because getting in and out of your trailer boat should be easy. And by Indian River, Michigan Tourist Bureau. Pure waters, pure trails, pure north. Let me show you this. This is a handy tool, especially when you're fishing these deeper beds on a windy day. We've got a nice calm day today, so I can see pretty good. But Aquaview makes a pole adapter that hooks on a extension pole, a painter's pole. And I tape the cord as it goes up the, the pole. But it's nice to have that sitting at the side when you get out on these deeper beds and you say, ah, it kind of looks like one on a windy, cloudy day. Let's check it out. And let's do that. Let's check it out right now. I see the boulder, the bed's right in front of it. And look who just came in for the party. <laughs> and you could twist the camera. Look, he's looking right in the camera. I'm operating the trolling motor at the same time while I'm holding this pole. He just swam off. I got a little too, little too close. You can see, look at all those zebra mussels on the boulder. Okay, now I'm coming up on a log. And there's a bed, it looks like, on that right side of the log. Is there a fish here? See, I can't see it from up here. But looky there, looky there. I couldn't see it from above, but I can see it on the aqua view. But you can see what a handy tool that is. The aqua view HD7i Pro. Yep, there's a fish there too. Another one sitting next to a boulder. Need to position so I can see it a little better. Oh, he's following it. <laughs> there he is! <laughs> it's another good one. <laughs> it's another good one. <laughs> Gosh, they're all this size. That's a whole of reason to come up here, you know? Gosh, they are hefty, hefty fish. I'm gonna net this one, see I lost the last one. I'm trying to lip it, oh, that is a good, 
Good, good fish. <laughs> yes, sir. Right in the roof of the mouth. Indian River Gold, that's what that is right there. Indian River Gold. Burt, Mullet, Crooked, the river, the Sheboygan, it all has quality fish like that. And one of the main reasons is the gobies. Honestly, if you're interested in catching an average of quality sized smallmouths, you need to treat yourself and come fish the lakes around Indian River, Michigan. Not only does this region grow giants, this is without a doubt a fisherman friendly community offering a variety of accommodations to suit your needs. Conventional hotels with pool and plenty of parking, clean mom and pop owned motels who personally go out of their way to cater to their guests. Comfortable cabins, some even riverside with boat docking and boat rental. You can find a map and an entire accommodations listing on the Indian River Tourist Bureau website. So check it out and check in. And be sure to tell them Hook and Look sent you. We'll see you next week on Hook and Look. Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production.